What's going on, Jerome's? Happy Sunday. Second year safety Lewis Seen is making a comeback from that horrific uh, broken leg uh, fracture that he had over in London week four last year against the Saints. Uh, working his way in with the twos uh, and looking to have a, a very bright future in purple. And Lewis Seen has been getting after it in the rehab uh, and doing all the work. And frankly, it's pretty damn amazing uh, that he is back uh, on the field to play and he, he's been showing up he, like he's been making plays during training camp and really turning heads and a uh, future is rather bright uh, for the pride of Jojo Jojo uh, going forward but of course last night uh, against the Tennessee Titans uh, I mean Seeing got a little bit posterized, uh, where he filled the gap, went low, and Tajay Spears hurdled him and had just a ridiculous, r- ridiculous touchdown run. Absolute highlight reel stuff. Uh, Tajay Spears, uh, the pride of Tulane. And uh, the whole part of it is that Lewis Seen had some ups and downs, uh, but we weren't watching the game in real time. Uh, we weren't following along on, on social media. We got up uh, early on Sunday, and we watched the game back. And I, frankly, thought that Lewis Seen overall played a very good game. And we put Lewisine in our winners, and we even put Lewisine at number one because, frankly, there wasn't a whole lot of winners last night, especially people who watched the whole thing. Mm. Uh, but w- with Seen, I don't know what it is, but in the comments, we got so much vitriol. Oh, how dare you? Blah, 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 blah. Seen played a horrible game. Blah, blah, blah. And I don't know why, but it, it does seem like Vikings fans, uh, a certain segment of the fan base, just has absolute hatred for Lewis Seen. Doesn't have the time of day for him. Uh, ignores every good play that he has, and he had several of them on Saturday night, and just accentuates everything negative about him. At war, I don't really understand it. Uh, Lewis Seen, like I said, frankly, had a rather good game. You know, seven tackles, six solo, uh, had a sack, a quarterback hit, uh, a tackle for loss, uh, three defensive stops, including uh, a really nice uh, open field tackle against Malik Willis down in the goal line. Uh, only allowed 12 yards in coverage. So over Overall, I think that he did pretty well, and uh, all of the all of the mistakes that Lewisine makes generally are with tackling for him. And you know, part of it is everyone wants to grow up to be like Andrew Sandejo, just blow people up. And, and Lewisine, you know, co- coming in at just shy of 200 pounds, like he does, sort of have a Bob Sanders thing going on. Where Bob Sanders, the pride of Iowa and Indianapolis, like he had a problem is that he was too physical and it, it was rough on his body and Lewisine has to watch out for that you know same thing uh, with a Caleb Evans to a degree uh, but the whole thing about uh, scene is like tackling technique that is fixable uh, versus I would rather have that versus someone who isn't in the right spot and scene generally is in the right spot especially uh, in run fits and filling gaps and whatnot so I ain't really losing sleep over that and also the whole thing is well, Lewis Seen misses tackles. Harrison Smith missed 10 tackles last year. He's missed 99 for his career. But uh, I, I'm told that, hey, if a guy misses one tackle in a preseason game, that means that he's a bust and he should be uh, he should be cut. He should uh, be working for dominoes and just go from there, man. Plus, I mean, Lewis Seen was drafted to be Harrison Smith's replacement. And if Lewis Seen didn't break his leg last year, I think that there is there would have been a high probability that Harrison Smith is cut-cut uh, versus the pay cut, and Lewis Seen takes over uh, this season. Now I think that that's been delayed by a year. I think this is the last dance with Harrison Smith, and I do think that Lewis Seen is going to be in line to replace Harrison at strong safety. I think that's clearly uh, what the plan is with Quasey. And you know, all, all the vitriol that Lewis Seen gets, I mean, Harrison Smith last year, Yes, tied his career high for five interceptions, but also wasn't blitzing as much as he should, was in more in coverage, allowed 425 yards uh, in coverage last year, career high, also a career high uh, 80% completion percentage when thrown out allowed. So where's the hate towards Harrison? Although, yes, Harrison has, has earned the benefit of the doubt. Lewis C, not so much yet, but I would j- just give the kid a break. Just give uh, the kid a little bit of time because, you know, like I said, coming out of Georgia, showed up well on that great defense, was defensive MVP of the national title game uh, and whatnot, and is a physical freak. And, you know, a, a couple of his issues is that he has had these minor injuries that have put him behind the eight ball, including, you know, that major, uh, you know, broken leg injuries. But why, why is there just so much unbridled 
disdain for him. Uh, there's a couple reasons why. Number one, uh, drafted over Kyle Hamilton. And yes, Kyle Hamilton turned in you know, one of the best rookie seasons for a safety in NFL history, and the Vikings could have had him at 12. Uh, they traded down with the Lions. The Lions came up for Jamison Williams, and it is more of a well, we could have drafted this guy, we could have drafted that guy, could have drafted Kyle Hamilton or Jordan Davis or Jamison Williams, bet, all, all, all that stuff. And I, I, I get it, but the whole thing is, like, you're just going to hold it against Lewisine. He didn't ask to be drafted by the Vikings after trading down. He didn't ask to be number 32 overall. He didn't do all that. And number two, he didn't win the job as rookie. And, and, and the whole thing about that is that uh, Lewisine, like we said, had a myriad of injuries. And last year, I mean, respect, Harrison Smith was that dude. Uh, Cameron Bynum had a fantastic training camp. Regular season, a uh, l- little bit rough. And also, we, we said this a bunch, stylistically, one for one, Lewisine and Cameron Bynum are two completely different safeties. So you can't just say, like, hey, why can't Lewisine play Cameron Bynum's spot? Because they're not the same type of safety. That's all. Like I said, it's more it's more Harrison is going to be replaced by Lewisine uh, eventually. And then it gets into God injured. Uh, I don't know what it is, but a lot of fans do hold it against players who get injured. And it, it sort of is what it is. Uh, no one asks to be hurt. No one asks to be injury prone, even though I, I don't consider Lewisine injury prone. Also, he didn't win the job in year two, but there's a couple reasons for that. I mean, Harrison took that pay cut and he is back. Uh, Cameron Bynum uh, is still installed as a starter. Josh Metellus is now the third safety uh, because he played very well last year, and that's what Brian Flores wants to do, using Metellus as uh, basically a joker on defense, a linebacker safety, etc. Uh, Theo Jackson, Jay Ward have played well, uh, and they've been easing Lewisine back into the lineup. Were they just supposed to put him uh, ahead of Harrison Smith uh, as he came back from a broken leg during OTAs? Is that the plan? Is that is that really what you wanted uh, to happen? I don't know. Uh, number five, disdain for Quasey. I mean, let, let's be honest here. I mean, part of it is people don't like Quasey, where people don't like things that are different. And Quasey is a, a new age analytical guy versus the, uh, you know, the old school former scout, former player, uh, you know, chewing on sixteen cans of Copenhagen, uh, and just grinding film. Like that's what they want as their scout slash GM, uh, etc. Now Quasey has done things a little bit different. And some of the trades you may not agree with, some of the draft picks you may not agree with, and it, it could be that the Lewisine disdain is a proxy war for disdain for Quasi. It just sort of is what it is. Also, it's a microwave society. People want things now, now, now uh, versus crockpots. You get a better uh, product with a crockpot, slow cook everything, baby, versus just zapping something in the microwave. That's it. Uh, number seven. I don't know. This might be too philosophical, but maybe people just hate themselves and they're just projecting through Lewis scene or they hate themselves so much. That's why they're Vikings fans because we're, we're such sadomasochists. I don't know that, that got a little bit too deep, but uh, either way, I still believe in Lewis scene. I, I think that he has shown enough flashes uh, where it, it does make you feel, uh, make you feel good uh, about the future. He's still learning on the job. He's still relatively young. He's a true junior coming out. Uh, and that, that, uh, that injury, I mean, it will have an impact, you know, just in confidence and planning off that leg, uh, confidence in cutting, confidence in, in all that stuff. But uh, he is active. He's high energy. Uh, he is making plays. I got to uh, suture up that tackling technique a little bit, and I think that he'll be good to go. But I ain't ready to give up on that, man. He's, this is basically his rookie season. Uh, but, yeah. So, I again, I, I don't understand why people don't give him the time of day. But I, I, I get the reasoning. I just, no, nah, don't give up on number six. Not yet. Not yet, man. Uh, Andrew Boo Jr., though. I'm just playing. Uh, anyways, your thoughts on our thoughts. Uh, why do some Vikings fans hate Lewis Seen? Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once worth the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.